film opens with a happily married couple, Linda and Mark, who are all dressed up and ready to go have their anniversary dinner. They leave their trusted neighbor slash babysitter, Barbara to look after Chloe, their young daughter. While Linda and Mark enjoy their time together at the restaurant later, their daughter Chloe asks Barbara to cook her mac and cheese. However, when Barbara is in the middle of boiling some water for the pasta, we can clearly see that Barbara seems a little off. She suddenly looks confused and begins to zone out. Meanwhile, the naive Chloe offers to help her out in the kitchen. No, it's too hot. With Barbara seemingly lost in her own head, unfortunately, the young girl ends up getting her hand burnt by the boiling water. The medics are called to the scene, as well as Linda and Mark, who rush right inside once they get home to make sure their daughter is alright. Barbara apologizes profusely, and according to an EMT personnel, it appears that Barbara suffers from Alzheimer's, therefore she is no longer fit to babysit a young child. I'm sorry. Later that night, Linda struggles to accept the idea of quitting her job to care for Chloe full-time. The couple discusses about getting a new nanny for Chloe, but neither are sure who would be a right fit. Mark mentions that they are only a few weeks away from finishing their second home as an investment, which will cover their living expenses if Linda does indeed quit her job in the future. Right that next morning, Mark is fixing up their second house, while Chloe wanders around like a child would, and ends up toying with what looks like a nail gun. She might have seriously injured herself if it were not for a passerby stopping her. The passerby takes Chloe right back to Mark, and we learn that her name is Heather. Mark, who sees how Chloe seems to have taken a liking to this girl, promptly brings her home, and introduces Heather to his wife. Linda is hesitant when Mark suggests Heather as their new nanny, because they don't know much about her background. Mark, on the other hand, persuades her that Heather is a good choice because she lives right in town. Following the discussion, the married couple decides to ask Heather if she'd like to become Chloe's new nanny. Heather ecstatically takes the job, claiming that she happens to be looking for some way to make extra money. Heather states that she has worked as a sitter in the past, and provides the phone number of her previous employer as a reference. Later that night, Linda who still hasn't fully trusted Heather, tries to call her previous employer, and receives good feedbacks for Heather. She's a real lifesaver. Found herself a good one, really. They then decides to purchase a nanny cam to install inside the house, out of concern for their daughter's safety. Linda goes shopping for nanny cams the very next day, and is given the recommendation to purchase an alarm clock radio with a built-in camera. The mother is at ease now that the new hidden camera is set up inside the house, and she can watch her daughter practicing violin like she always does. Afterwards, Chloe is seen happily playing with Heather by the front porch. When Heather enters the house to fetch some water, Barbara who lives right next door excitedly walks up to her because she misses her. As the two share a pleasant chat, Heather turns up. Heather starts getting overly protective, and acts completely hostile towards Barbara. So much. They hate you for what you did. They tell me every day how grateful they are to have me. Shame on you. Barbara who is baffled turns around and walks home. Linda turns up not long after, and asks what's going on. Heather immediately lies by telling her that Barbara was simply screaming at her about how she stole Barbara's job. Linda feels sorry for Heather, and tells her that Barbara is unwell. During supper that evening, the landline rings, and Heather goes to answer. As it turns out, the caller is Barbara, who is apologizing once again for the incident a few days ago, during which boiling water spilled on Chloe's hand. Yet again, Heather responds unkindly, but this time she takes it an extra notch by impersonating Linda's voice to basically tell Barbara off. Be much better off if you just hurry up and die. Later that night, Mrs. Barbara suddenly hears a strange noises in her house. Unbeknownst to her, an ominous shadow passes by her. On the next morning, Linda who is at work receives a phone call that informs her that Barbara has committed suicide. This devastates her deeply, as she has known Barbara for a long time and the last time she saw Barbara, the old woman seemed alright. Linda and Mark then leave the house to attend Barbara's funeral, leaving Heather to watch over Chloe in the meantime. When they return home, they're surprised to see how clean and tidy their house is. Linda then walks up to Heather, who informs her that she is only doing it to pass the time while Chloe is sleeping. We can see that Linda feels uneasy with this, and tells Heather that they only hired her to watch Chloe, that's all. Before going to bed that night, Linda decides to check out the latest footage in the nanny cam. 
She discovers Heather and Chloe having a three hour long conversation, instead of practicing violin or doing other activities. On the next day, Linda becomes stressed again when Chloe refuses to eat what she prepared, and claims that Heather is a better cook than Linda. Moreover, Chloe informs Linda that she no longer wishes to play the violin, because she has discovered a new hobby, monologue speech, which she learned from Heather. When Heather arrives for her routine, Linda decides to ask Heather about the long conversation they had before. Heather tells her that she and Chloe were having a conversation about death, because Chloe had a lot of questions about it after Barbara's death. Linda then advises her to keep Chloe's violin practice going, and it is at this point Heather realizes that she's being watched this whole time. She immediately searches for the nanny cam around the house. That afternoon, Mark arrives home from work and decides to sit down and converse with Heather. Mark reveals that he got injured during work, and the girl gives him a painkiller. Heather then takes this opportunity to flirt with him, and eventually tries to kiss him. Mark who feels uncomfortable proceeds to tell Heather to go home. Heather then suggestively tells him about the nanny cam, and asks him if he's ever watched her. Mark pays the question no attention, and continues on his way to the upstairs. Later on, Mark decides to check out the nanny cam footage, and finds Heather deliberately taking her clothes off, and making compromising poses in front of the camera. Creeped out but possibly a little inappropriately intrigued, Mark shuts his laptop. As this is going on right under Linda's nose, Linda begins to develop a strange hunch that something is amiss, so she decides to add more nanny cams around the house. On the next day, we learn that Linda is taking a half-day leave at work, because she is going to watch Chloe's school recital. Though her boss initially objects, he finally lets her leave work early. On her way there, she suddenly gets pulled over by the cops. Upon exiting the vehicle, they inform her that they received a report claiming that she has kidnapped a child. Linda who is confused tries telling them that they are mistaken. The cops then take her in for questioning, and don't let her go until much later that night, which means that she missed her daughter's recital. Chloe throws a tantrum as she is understandably disappointed in her mom, and so is Mark. Linda tries explaining that she got pulled over by the cops, but Mark is unwilling to take her excuse. The mother has a hunch that this has something to do with Heather. Linda then tries to call Heather's previous employer, which reveals that it is Heather's own phone number, which Heather promptly rejects. Unbeknownst to Linda, earlier that day, Heather was actually the one who called the police, and told them to go after Linda's car under the guise of kidnapping. Linda tries to check all the recorded videos from the nanny cams later that night, and discovers they have been deleted. She and Mark are arguing about the deleted nanny cam files, and Mark admits that he deleted the files because it's no longer a good idea to monitor someone's privacy, despite the fact that it was their idea. We also learn that Heather is watching them from a nanny cam that she secretly installed inside the house. Not only that, she is watching from where she secretly leaves, which is Mark and Linda's second house that is still under renovation. On the next day, Linda begins her search for any information regarding Heather's identity with the help of the cam seller. She calls her landline and leaves a message saying she'll be home late that day. While Linda is off doing her own search, Mark gets home and is greeted by Heather as per usual. The girl sits Mark down and drugs him with a drink until he gets drowsy, and proceeds to flirt with him again. While Mark is struggling to keep his mind coherent, Heather creepily starts rambling about a supposed relationship between her and Mark, and that she wants him to leave his wife for her. Meanwhile, Linda's search leads her to Heather's parents' house, and as they welcome her inside, they proceed to show her pictures of their daughter in skimpy outfits, that should not have been appropriate for someone Heather's age. The father compliments her on her beauty, and says he likes her in that outfit. Linda then tells them that the girl in the picture isn't Heather she's looking for, and proceeds to go home right when the mother tells her not to bring Heather back to her you father. Keep her away from him. We do not know for sure what happens before, except that when Linda gets home later that night, she finds Mark already in bed. On the next morning, Linda proposes to Mark that they should fire Heather, because she has a bad feeling about her and that ever since they hired her, strange things have been happening around them. Mark doesn't argue, so they let Heather go. Later that day, Linda is about to deliver a big presentation at work. But unexpectedly, the screen suddenly glitches and ends up playing a video of Heather having sex with her husband. Furious, Linda storms back home to confront Mark, and the two heatedly argue. I don't even know what happened. 
Linda then runs up the stairs to fetch Chloe but to her surprise, Chloe is nowhere to be found. They call up the police, who later sits them down to inform them that after some investigation, they discovered that Heather's parents that Linda visited the other day are not her biological parents, but are instead her foster ones. As it turns out, Heather was an orphan. Hearing this, things are beginning to click in Linda's mind. She then decides to check out the nanny cam she installed in Chloe's room, wherein she discovers Heather talking to the camera, and asking Linda to go see her in Mark's construction site. Linda rushes to the house, and finds her daughter Chloe, with her other daughter, Heather. Well, you heard that right, Heather finally reveals that she is Linda's daughter, who she put up for adoption a long time ago when she was younger. Heather who felt betrayed for being left behind, decided to concoct an elaborate plan to ruin Linda's life. Linda then pulls out her necklace that she put on her daughter, when her daughter was placed outside of a hospital long time ago. The mother explains that Heather is lying since her daughter has died in a car accident eight years ago, when she started tracking her down and retrieving the necklace. The two end up scuffling, with Heather managing to knock Linda down. Mark arrives soon after and tries reasoning with her, but then this happens. While Mark bleeds out on the floor and little Chloe cries in fear, Linda rises up and once again scuffles with Heather. This time, Linda manages to gain the upper hand. I'm not your mommy, bitch. Heather falls down the window, and Linda is finally reunited with her daughter. However, the next time the camera pans outside the window, Heather is no longer there. On the next scene, it appears that some time has passed, and we see Linda, Mark and Chloe spending time with each other and they look happy. The movie then takes us to a view of inside Greyhound bus, where an old lady approaches a woman holding a baby. It turns out that she is none other than Heather. And this is where the film ends. <laughs>